Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is Unapologetic Truth. And I have an unapologetic thought, another thought that came up maybe about 20 minutes ago or so. And it had me thinking. I received a text message of encouragement and it talked about praise. And G-O-D was used in the text. Uh, it was a meme. A meme or whatever whatever you call it. But basically it was uh, a word of encouragement. And it got me to thinking. Because I received this from someone who has been in the faith all their life practically and it got me to thinking how are we as believers going to differentiate between the world when we're constantly using the term Christian if you turn on an award show Usually they're like, I, I want to thank G.O.D. And they're talking in interviews, oh, um, oh, I'm a Christian. They're so quick to want to say that, but nothing in their lives exemplify what that means or the true meaning of it. Now we know in the New Covenant Scriptures, which some refer to as the New Testament. The term, in fact, it was in Acts, and the term was used. And basically, it's been used ever since, but we don't understand why it was used. And how it's used now. So basically, and, you know, I was looking into this because it had me wondering. um, I know the term, I knew the term was being used uh, or had been used um, in the New Covenant scriptures. However, I just wanted to understand where what the term signified uh, because obviously it doesn't mean the same thing anymore. Um, And so, like I said, I did a little bit of research. I didn't go too deep though. Um, But what I found initially um, talked about how the term was being used between the Jews and the Gentiles. And it was a term that basically bought both sex, if you will, bought, bought everyone together. The Jews and the Gentiles that were grafted in. So the term at, at that time in first century in the first century, should I say, it was used to differentiate between the Roman Catholic Church or it, it was used to be, to show that they were set apart and that the Jews and the Gentiles that were grafted in were now a group and were now together. And so later on, as time continued, we have all the different denominations that have come about and many still use that term. But as we, as many of us know today, especially true believers, 
and I'm saying true believers because there is a very stark difference. Uh, some of us that are in the knowledge of the truth. I'll just leave it at that. We don't have that much time to go into it. And I have touched on that um, previously. Um, but we know that there is a definite difference. And when you talk to uh, other quote unquote Christians, um, or you talk to Christians that are supposed to be truly in the faith, they use the term and they don't like for somebody to call themselves anything other than that. Just like some don't even like other believers to use the most high's true name, Yahuwah or Yah. People actually have cor tried to correct other believers when they use that term. They use his name. It's not even a term. It's his actual name. G-O-D is a term. Okay. Even though it's in the Bible. So people have even went as far as to call it being have be you know wicked which is ridiculous and it just shows um it shows people spiritual ignorance is what it shows but i'm saying all this to say how are they how is the world ever going to know the diff that, that there is a difference, especially in these last days, when it's going to come down to a time when we're all going to have to choose. So how's the world going to know that there is truly a difference if we keep using the terms that mainstream Christianity, and again, I'm air quoting, uses how are they going to know the difference we're supposed to be set apart we're supposed to come out from among them and be ye separate but how how do we do that if we're constantly referring to the terms that the secular world uses and they use the term so loosely so is is it like to say, oh, I spell that with a capital C instead of a small C, just like sp spelling G-O-D with a capital or, or L-O-R-D in all caps. But OK, th that makes no sense either, because when you're when you're verbalizing it, you really think somebody's going to know the difference of what you're trying to say and what you really mean. Like. So that's why I titled this, Make It Make Sense, please, because it's not making sense. And we have to, if we truly are believing and wanting to stay in the truth or and gain more knowledge of who we serve in Yahushua HaMashiach, Messiah, If we really want to grow in our in our belief or emunah, our faith, if we really want to grow, then we have to start looking at these things because it does matter. Just like who we serve matters. And we have to start paying attention to those things and being more conscious of it and watching just like we're supposed to be watching how, what we say, how we say it. Those things we have to be more mindful of because it makes a difference. Whether people want to believe it or not, it makes a difference. So as for me, I no longer use that term. I use believer because I am a believer. I'm a believer in the most high, Yah, 
and his son, Yahushua HaMashiach. And I'm baptized in the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. And those are the terms that I'm using to distinguish myself from this world. And I highly encourage other believers that truly have the understanding to leave these terms alone and come out from among them and be ye separate. Please. I'll see you in the next one. Be blessed. Shalom.